Hey, I'm Magic, and this is Trend Lines, brought to you by oracleselixir.com. Today, I'm going to be looking at a few players from the NALCS whose stock has either been rising or falling so far this split compared to my own expectations of how they would perform. So let's jump right in with my first player whose stock has been rising, which is Wild Turtle from TSM. So I'd say my expectations for Wild Turtle coming into the split were pretty low. I was actually, you know, I, I wasn't entirely sure what to think, but I had some fears that TSM wouldn't be able to perform up to their previous level. And I still have, you know, some of those concerns, but but I was really concerned that, that Wild Turtle especially would not be able to fill double lift shoes, that his laning phase would get exploited, that his more risk-taking play style really wouldn't work out, and, and with Biofrost, you know, maybe he wouldn't be able to step up as well without double lift alongside him. But, you know, I'd say that well, Wild Turtle so far in the first two weeks hasn't been great, he doesn't need to be, and I never thought he needed to be great. He just needed to be solid, he needed to reduce his mistake count a little bit, and, you know, fill the fill the role the best he could. I think he's doing his job better than I expected. Uh, he obviously, like I said, he hasn't been perfect, he hasn't been great, uh, but while his laning was a concern coming in, he's actually been kind of a mid-tier laner so far. He's been doing okay. He's got a he's got a negative 1.6 uh, CS difference at 10 minutes, which is on the bottom end of the scale for for 80 carries, but he's got a positive gold difference at 10 minutes. He's keeping up all right. He's not letting himself be snowballed on the way I feared that he might be. We're still seeing some forward aggression from him in team fights, but it hasn't been extreme, and he's been keeping his death count pretty reasonable. Uh, he's actually only got a 17.4% death share, which is middle of the pack, uh, and, and he's not getting punished for, you know, flashing into fights in really extreme circumstances. He's he's doing pretty well at managing his moments uh, compared to what we might have seen from, from him uh, on Immortals last year or things like this. Uh, his damage output has been just fine. He actually leads all 80 carries in North American damage share, even though his damage per minute is low, but that's because TSM has been playing really kind of low pace games, uh, really low combined kills per minute. Uh, and his utility has been pretty good with, you know, using Ash Ultimate, things like this. So he's he's been filling this utility role, this kind of secondary role, better than I kind of thought he would. Uh, and... Uh, that's you know that's really comforting from a TSM perspective because it's allowed Bjergsen to to be more of the carry and do more of his job. So if if and when the the AD carry meta shifts away from the utility bot laners, that may open up both some more of Wild Turtle's strengths of being a really explosive team fighter. It may also open up some more of his weaknesses by um, putting more burden on him to be a carry, which may uh, lead enemies to work harder to exploit him. So. You know his range of play will probably get you know a higher seeing and a in a lower floor if the meta moves in that direction. But for now, Wild Turtle is doing his job well. He's exceeding my expectations, and if he stays at this level, I think TSM are going to be just fine. Another player whose stock is rising in my mind uh, is Impact from Cloud9. Uh, it feels like a bit of, a bit of a strange one to call out because his stock was already so high coming out of last year. But you know while he finished to, uh, 2017 or 16 really strong. He's picking up right where he left off. Uh, Jensen and Contracts are getting all of the discussion for Cloud9, and you know Cloud9 doing so well, they're topping the standings. Jensen's been really flashy as the carry. Contracts being really, you know, going in there on, on Kha'Zix and, and creating a lot of havoc, had some, some really good play right off the bat of the split, coming in as a rookie when the expectations were kind of mixed. But Impact, while he hasn't had that kind of conversation around him and hasn't been drawing people's eyeballs to him as much, he's been just as good as those players in my mind, just playing a different role. And it's the role that he has always played for this team and generally always played throughout his career, which is, you know, doing whatever the team needs, drawing pressure away from, from his teammates and enabling his teammates to be effective. Uh, leaving aside all of the top die stuff with the solo kills and everything from the end of last uh, of the summer split in the playoffs, which was actually somewhat uncharacteristic for him. Uh, I'd say so far Impact has had one bad game. That was in game two against CLG uh, when Smithy camped him really hard and he gave up a couple of early deaths. But other than that, Impact has been leaning really well. He's been dodging and outplaying ganks uh, just as well as ever. And that makes Contracts' job much easier because he doesn't have to worry about his top lane getting exploited. He doesn't have to worry about kind of camping for Impact and making sure Impact's okay because Impact, you know, even when they're trying to make sure he's not okay when the enemy is, Impact is coming out okay anyways. Uh, he's got high kill participation. He's third among starting top laners in damage share while only playing Nautilus, Shen, and Maokai. Uh, he's, you know, team fighting really well. He's split pushing and drawing all kinds of pressure to him, which opens up the map for the rest of the team. Uh, 
he's just he's doing everything and he's not he's doing all the small things right that allow the team to be successful around him so you know coming from a place where i voted impact as the best top laner in north america in the summer split last year when obviously he did so well in the playoffs and his stock was really climbing i think he's still performing at least at that level uh and he's you know with all the extra top lane talent coming into north america he's still leading the pack for me uh now moving on to to a more you know the more negative side of this there are some players whose stock has been falling who i had higher expectations of coming into this into the split and starting off that list is poe belter who he's you know he, he's not doing he he's had some attention for his really low kda things like this there's kind of some some memes out about how he considered himself a top 10 mid laner haha ha, but now he's actually 11th in kda because because uh, Alex Each was in uh, for a few games. But, I mean, I don't think he's been that bad, but I do think he hasn't been performing up to what he needs to be doing. Um, he's he's had got some of the worst laning stats of all mid laners. He's got a better CS difference at 10 minutes than Golden Glue, but his gold and experience uh, differences are lower, uh, and he's doing the worst laning on his team as well. So it's not just everybody around him, you know, struggling, and that makes it easier to punish him. He's He's struggling a lot himself. He's only got a 56% kill participation. That's like that's a low top laner kill participation. So he's he's not getting involved around the map the way we're used to seeing from him when when you know he's done a lot of roaming on someone like Immortals uh, last year. That that's a lot of what he would do is is hit the side lanes and, and make sure that his teammates could be uh, effective. With a low kill participation, we you know we see that there, we've seen him do some roaming, but it hasn't been uh, as effective or as impactful as in the past. Uh, his damage numbers are really low. You know, uh, even though mid lane right now is um, one of the biggest carry roles, with AD carry taking a bit of a step back, so that's you know that's kind of disappointing too. I, I think what we need to see from Pobelter is embracing the primary carry role a little bit more. Uh, it's something that he hasn't really had to do in the past with the teams that he's been on for the past couple of years. Uh, with CLG, it was you know double lift in 2015 was always the primary carry, and Pobelter would play more utility. He'd play Lulu or Orianna, things like this, and make sure Double Lift could be successful. With Immortals, like I was saying, he'd do a lot of roaming. Huni and Wild Turtle were the big explosive carries, and Pobelter, again, playing a secondary role, and he did very well in both of these teams, making sure that his primary carries could be successful with the way he moved around the map, the champions he played, things like this. But as a primary carry of himself, the one who's relied on to be propped up by his team, go out there and carry the game, He's been unreliable, he's been inconsistent, and this is the time, this is the team and the meta in which he needs to embrace that role and break through into a new style uh, that he hasn't really filled in the past. So he, he just overall he needs to prove that he's more than an enabler. And he's a very good enabler, but uh, you know we'll, le we'll leave it with that. The, the last player, and this is actually a duo lane that I want to call out that's been, uh, their stock has really been falling for me, is Piglet and Matt from Team Liquid. You know, there, there's a lot to say about them, and I don't want to harp on them on a whole bunch of things. But the the biggest thing that that I that has stood out for me is that these two players, obviously the meta doesn't suit them. Piglet is an outplay focused AD carry. He wants to have a really high skill cap champion. He wants to beat you in lane, not just in CS, but by killing you. He wants to snowball himself. All of these things. And Matt, you know, when he's been at his best, was alongside Piglet enabling that kind of style being aggressive making plays putting himself out there and taking risks and having them pay off and this meta does not allow that the champions that are in lane do not allow that in the laning phase uh, but the problem is that they aren't adjusting to that meta and realizing well that we have to play differently right uh, they are still playing as if they have champions that they can you know dodge a bunch of skill shots and make out plays on they're pushing the lane up to the tower harassing under tower and getting chip damage these kinds of very aggressive laning um, styles and they're doing that as if their jungler is there to camp for them or as if they've got a bunch of vision to protect them from the enemy jungler or as if they've got champions that will allow them to escape if they are ganked they don't have any of these things rainover is spending all his time on the top of the map not all but most of his time on the top of the map and yet piglet and matt are not timing their kind of ebb and flow of the of the lane pushes uh, in the bottom lane around where rainover is on the map uh, they're getting punished for that super hard uh, they've got a combined average 1.7 deaths at 15 minutes, which is the worst of any NALCS bottom lane, um, because of this exact thing that they they know, the enemy knows, they can gank bottom lane, hey look, they're leaving themselves exposed with they, the way they position, 
and you know whether you've got information that Rainover isn't there because you've seen him top or whether you just know from scouting Team Liquid Rainover spends a lot of time top so we're probably not going to get counter ganked whatever it is teams are punishing these openings really hard so I think Team Liquid, they've got a lot of other problems going on, but Piglet and Matt's laning and lack of recognition of how to be a safe lane, how to be a conservative lane, and, you know, provide their value later in the game with their utility, uh, that's really got to, they've got to turn that around. This is a good week to turn that around because they're up against Echo Fox and Envious, which should be uh, a bit of a softer week for them with a couple of, uh, you know, softer bottom lanes to come up against. But if they can't, make these fixes to how they are thinking about the laning phase, then, you know, they can get punished just as hard by by jungle ganks. You know, these teams have some skilled junglers who can punish them, and you can't uh, underestimate anybody in the NALCS uh, this split. So I really want to see Piglet and Matt learn how to coordinate better with Rainover. If they are going to continue to push the lane and be aggressive, Rainover needs to be there on that bottom side to counter gank for them or protect them with wards or whatever it is. Or they need to kind of swallow their pride, play a little further back in lane, try not try so hard to generate CS leads or advantages for themselves and just be safer. Uh, so these are some of the players that I just wanted to call out so far from the first two weeks. Uh, there will be you know much more to talk about in the coming weeks, and I hope to, to kind of revisit this format in the future. So let me know what you think of it in the comments. And that's going to be it for this edition of Trendlines. So let me know your thoughts on these players uh, in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and to check out oraclesilixir.com for in-depth player, team, and champion statistics and analysis. Thanks for watching.